Hello everybody, welcome to Classic Education YouTube channel. Myself Mahesh Pundibich, faculty member at Classic IAS and KS Study Circle Darwad. So today we are going to continue yesterday's part. That is, we are going to cover CSAT 2020 examination, few questions, few more questions. So yesterday we discussed some questions, around 10 questions we have discussed. So those who have not gone through it, please see the previous video so that some of the things I will be explaining you here. So let us observe the first question. What is the least four digit number? Okay, see so it's talking about four digit number. When divided by three, four, five and six leaves a remainder of two in each case. Now, what most of the students they do is they will first take the LCM of it. They will take a least four digit number. They will divide it and the procedure will go. But we can solve this problem okay, within 20 seconds also if we understand the concepts properly. Now in yesterday's class, I had told you about divisibility of 3. In the same way, we have divisibility for 4, 5, 6 and all. But when I told you the divisibility of 3 in yesterday's class, I told you if the digit sum of any number, if the digit sum of any number is 3, 6 or 9, then that number is completely divisible by 3. Now you see what he is telling me that the least four digit number okay and he is telling me that when you divide it by three in each case okay when you divide it by three you should get the remainder as two. That means now you see if there is a number okay say for example if there is a number x and if I am getting the digit sum of this number as six then what is the conclusion? The conclusion is this x is divisible by three. Now, if I say, now if I need the remainder as 2, now if I need the remainder as 2, what I am going to do, see here, this is 3, 6 and 9. These are the digit sum when my number is completely divisible by 3. And now I need the remainder as 2. So, what I will do, I will add 2 for these 3 numbers. And what I am going to get, so I will get, 5 here, I will get 8 here and I will get 2 here. I am talking about digit sum. Okay, I am talking about digit sum. That means, when I divide a number by 3 and if I should get the remainder as 2, that means that particular number should have digit sum 5, 8 or 2. I repeat, if a number is, divi is divided by 3, and if I need to get the remainder as 2, then its digit sum should be 5, 8 or 2. Now, let us check the digit sum of this. You see, 2 plus 1 is 3, 3 plus 1 is 4. Here, I am getting the digit sum as 4. But if I divide this number by 3, and if I want to get 2 as the remainder, that means my digit sum should be 5 or 8 or 2. But here I am getting digit sum as 4. That means this cannot be my answer. Now we will check the second one. 2 plus 2 plus 1. That is the digit sum is 5. Digit sum is 5. And you see here I am having digit sum as 5. That means this can be my answer. This can be my answer. Let us check the next value. So 2 plus 2 is 4. 4 plus 1 is 5. And here it is a 6. Here digit sum is a 6 digit sum is a 6. But you see, if digit sum is 3, 6 or 9, that means this number is completely divisible by 3. Okay, But I do not need the number which is completely divisible by 3. I need the remainder as 2. That means this also cannot be my answer. Now, we will check the last one. So, 2 plus 2 plus 2 is 6 plus 1 is 7. Here the digit sum is 7. But what digit sum I need? I, I need 5 or 8 or 2. Okay. So, that means here also this also this option also cannot be my answer. That means there is only one number from the option which is 
which is having the digit sum as 5. Now, when I was discussing this question in the class, most of the students they asked, sir, what if two options are there, which is having one digit sum 5, one is having 2, then what we have to do? See, I have, I am talking about only the first number. I took, I took only the first number here. If you are getting two options, then you go with the next number. Okay. So, there are many numbers and out of this, when you go on eliminating, okay. So, within a time, you can solve this particular question. Fine. Let us move to the next question. Okay. A sum of rupees 2500 is distributed among x, y and z in the ratio 1 by 2 is to 3 by 4 is to 5 by 6. What is the difference between the maximum share and the minimum share? This is what the question is asked. Now see, we are being given with one ratio that is 1 by 2 is to 3 by 4 is to 5 by 6. Now when these ratios are given in the form of fractions, to convert it to an appropriate way, what we have to do? We have to take the LCM of denominators. And when we take the LCM of these denominators, it becomes 12. So what you do? You multiply that LCM to each ratio value. And when you multiply it, you cancel it. So 2 1s are 2 6s are 4 3s are 6 2s are. Okay. So, now what we are getting the ratio? We are getting 6. Okay. So, 3 into 3, it will become 9. Okay. And 5 2 is a 10. Yes. Now, you see, now what he is telling me that the sum is 2500 rupees. The sum is 2500 rupees. And here, it is been distributed in the ratio 6 is to 9 is to 10. So, now what we have to do? We have to sum this also. So, if we sum this, what I am going to get? I am going to get 25 units. I am going to get 25 units. Because in yesterday's class, I told you, whenever we talk about a ratio, we talk it in the form of units. So, 25 units and this sum is equals to 2500. So, this sum, this 25 units is nothing but 2500 rupees. That means, can I say that one unit Okay, one unit value is okay 100 rupees. Yes, because 25 units value is 2500. So if it get cancelled, it will become 100. Now what he has asked me, what is the difference between what is the difference between the maximum share and the minimum share? Now from this ratio, it is clearly observed that this is the maximum share and this is the minimum share. And he has asked me what is the difference between. So, the difference between this is 4 units. 1 unit value is 100, 4 unit value will become 400. So, 4 into 100, that is nothing but 400 is my answer. So, 400 is the answer, that is option C. Fine, let us move to the next question. Yes. For what value of n, the sum of the digit digits in the number 10 raised to n plus 1 is 2. Okay. So, that means the sum of the digits means, I have told you, digit sum. Okay. Digit sum. So, now we have to substitute the value or we have to tell for what value of n we are going to get digit sum as 2. Now, let us check the options here. Now, what he is telling me for n is equals to 0. Now, see, if I substitute n is equals to 0, okay, then what I am going to get? So, 10 raised to 0, any number raised to 0 is 1. So, that means here I am going to get 1 plus 1, that is nothing but 2. That means this first option is satisfying the condition. Now, second, for any whole numbers, you see, for any whole numbers, any whole numbers means 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and so on. That means you see, n is equals to 0 he has given. Let us check. Already we checked for 0. Okay. Now we have to check for 1, 2, 3 and all. So now you see, this is 10, 10 raised to 1 if I do, plus 1. Okay. So 10 raised to 1 is nothing but 10 itself. So 10 plus 1, it will become 11. 
1 plus 1 is nothing but 2. That means, for 1 it is satisfying. Now, you see for 2, you see this is 10 raised to n, n is nothing but in the form of 10 raised to power. If you place any value, that is in the form of whole numbers, if you place any value, you are going to get it in the form of 100, 1000, 10,000 like that. That means, when this value is going to become 10, 100, 1000, okay, 10,000, okay, and so on, you see the digit sum of these values, the, the digit sum of these numbers will be 1 always. That means, here I am going to get 1, okay, and plus 1, then that means it is going to give me 2 itself. So, that means this is more specific one compared to the now, let me check for the next one. For any positive integer. Now, for any positive integer means I have to place 1, 2, 3 and so on. But you see, he is not talking about 0 here. But when I place in place of n, when I place 0, then also I am getting the answer. So, I cannot have this as my specific answer. Now, for any real values, see, for any real numbers means if I put in the place of n, if I put any fraction value, then I am not going to get the answer. Okay. So, that means more specific answer will be this. Okay. More specific answer will be for any whole numbers because it includes 0, which he is talking here, only he has told. So, only when you put 0 here, I am not going to get, even I am going to get the answer for 1, 2, 3 and 4. So, more specific answer will be for any whole number n. Okay. Now, in a class, there are three groups, okay, A, B and C. If one student from group A and two students from group B are shifted to group C, then what happens to the average weight of the students of the class? This is very important of the class. Now, let us understand this question in this way. Suppose, this is a classroom and in the classroom we have some rows okay some rows of benches okay in this way okay and let us assume that this is a okay this is b and this is c let us assume that these are the groups a b and c now what he has told me that in a class there are three groups one a b and c Okay, if one student from group A, okay, so one student from here, okay, one student from here and two students from group B, two students from here, okay, two students from here are shifted to the group C, okay, these both are shifted to C, these both are shifted to C, okay, from here they are shifted to C, okay. Now, what is happening, what happens to the average weight of the students of the class. Now, see, let us assume that this is the class I have told you and if the average, average of this class is something like A. And what question he has told me, whatever shifting he is doing, he is doing within the classroom. When the shifting is done within the classroom, how can the average of the classroom change? So, that is why there will not be any change in the average of the class. Now, when the average of the class will change, the average of the class will change when any new member is added to this class or any one new member or any member from the classroom is left or when he goes outside the class, then the average of this class will change. So, that means what will be the answer here? Okay, It will be, it remains the same, it remains the same, this will be the answer. Now, suppose Instead of this question, if he had changed that what happens to the average weight of the students, okay, of the class of group B, of group, sorry, C, of group C, if he asked the question in this way. That means, after shifting this in that particular group, in group C, then what will happen to the average? So, when I was discussing this class in the uh, in the class, maximum of the students they told that it will increase. 
okay but uh, see here dear students it will not increase or it will not decrease also but uh, the more specific answer will be it depends upon the weight of those uh, students now see here now suppose okay suppose there is a class okay there is a class or you can say that it is group c only okay so one from a and two from b are been added to this now let us assume that he has told me average weight let us assume that c's average okay c average is 20 kg c average is 20 kg let us assume for time being now these three persons those who are coming inside this group if these two persons are coming inside this group and their weights are less than this 20 kg less than their 20 kg then what will happen the average will decrease average overall average will decrease and if the persons who are coming inside this group that is this three persons if their average is more than 20 if their average weight is more than 20 then what will happen the average of this class will increase so if the question is asked instead of this class if it is asked group c okay what will be the average weight of the students of the group c if it is asked then what will be the answer it depends upon the average weight of the group c and the and the students those who are entering the group so this will be the more specific answer fine okay okay a bottle contains 20 liters of liquid a okay it contains liquid a 4 liters of the liquid a is taken out okay 4 liters is taken out okay it is replaced by some quantity same quantity sorry same quantity of liquid b okay again 4 liters of mixture is taken out and replaced by same quantity of liquid b what is the ratio of a quantity of the liquid a to that of quantity of liquid b in the final mixture now what happens what has happened there is one container okay there is one container and in this there is liquid a okay there is only liquid a and it is 20 liters now what has happened he has taken out 4 liters from this and what he has take what he has done he has taken out 4 liters of a okay and he has added 4 liters of b in this and he has done it two times see when he has done it for two times can i say it is a successive concept in yesterday class i explained you about successive concept i told you when there was a 10 percent discount successive discount 20 percent of discount then paid 10 percent of tax we had three statements there so those who have not watched the previous video you please go and watch that video okay so that you will understand this properly okay so now see we will talk only about a now he has told me to find the ratio of a and b a is to b okay so what we will do we will talk only about a first now see here now a how much is a so 4 by 20 it is removed that is nothing but 1 by 5 okay so if i cancel it it will become 1 by 5 1 by 5 quantity is been removed that means can i say in that content okay there are 4 by 5 quantity of a is remaining in that container 4 by 5 quantity is remaining this is taken out okay this is taken out 1 by 5 quantity is taken out and now you see a 4 by 5 quantity is left or you can understand in this way also 20 percent of the quantity is taken out and what is remaining is 80 percent of the quantity and this has been repeated once again this has been repeated once again so what happens again it will become 4 by 5 and I am talking only about A. That means what will happen? It will become 16 by 25. 16 by 25. 
and i have told the students many times whenever there is a fraction my denominator will always represent the total quantity okay or it will represent initial value or original value now see now what what is the meaning of this fraction the meaning of this fraction is total a was 25 quantity okay and from that we have 16 quantity left okay 16 quantity left that means a is how much a is 16 units a is 16 units now he is telling me to find a is to b i got the value of a now how to find the value of b you see total quantity is 25 in that 16 quantity is a then whatever will be remaining that will be b that is nothing but 9 so 16 is to 9 is my answer so 16 is to 9 is my answer fine okay so this you can solve it by mixture and delegation method there is one particular formula also okay uh, you can just solve it but this would be the easy method okay fine okay as a result of 25 percent hike in the price of rice per kg a person is able to purchase 6 kg less rice okay for 1200 what was the original price of the rice per kg what was the original price of the rice per kg dear students this question uh, is asked based on product of two numbers is constant now when product of two numbers is constant then how to solve this question first let me explain you what is product of two numbers is constant now see now for example we know that expenditure is equals to quantity into rate quantity into rate now what is constant expenditure is constant in this question now what does this constant means let me tell you one example now suppose you are given 100 rupees by your parents okay and they told you to bring 5 kg of rice they told you to bring 5 kg of rice 5 kg of rice which cost 20 rupees per kg which cost 20 rupees per kg now what happened you went to the shop and once when you went to the shop you came to know that the shopkeeper told you that the price of the rice has been increased the price of the rice has been increased and it is not 20 rupees per kg now it is 25 rupees per kg the rate has been increased now when it has become 25 rupees per kg you don't have anything extra money from you you have only 100 rupees so this is constant so when you have only 100 rupees instead of taking 4 kg how much you will take you will take only 4 kg instead of taking 5 kg you will take 4 kg so what happened in this particular example we came to know that this value the amount expenditure which you had it was the same and we call this as constant that is not going to change and now when product of two numbers okay so when product of two numbers is constant okay and if this constant value is already given to me then we can find the rate of these values now see here what happened one quantity increased when one quantity increased ultimately another quantity decreased and here the same thing has been given now if i want to tell this thing in the form of statement see due to increase in the price due to increase in the price of the rice what happened the person is unable to get 1 kg less rice can i say it like this a person is unable to get 1 kg less rice the question has been asked in this particular question on same concept i just wanted to explain you what is mean by constant and this formula now let us understand how to solve this question okay as a result 25 percent of hike in the petrol that means the rate has been increased okay so now we see we know that 
25 परसेंट ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट मीन्स वी कैन रिप्रेजेंट इट एज वन बाई फोर नो वट इज दिस ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट इट इज द प्राइस ओके इट इज द प्राइस और यू कैन से इट इज रेट ओके दैट मीन्स यू सी इफ आई से दिस इज इनिशियल वैल्यू एंड लेट एस टेक हियर एज फाइनल वैल्यू दैट मीन्स जस्ट नाउ आई टोल्ड यू वेन एवर देर इज अ फ्रैक्शन दिस डिनोमिनेटर विल रिप्रेजेंट as the initial value or it will represent as the original value or it will also represent the total quantity now see now this rate whatever value i am having here that is the initial value initial value is 4 and now you see the rate has been increased increased means how much it will become 4 plus 1 it will become 5 now you can understand it in this way that the initial rate of it was 4 4 rupees per kg but we should understand it as in the form of unit okay and finally after increment it, it became 5 rupees per kg but we have to take it in the form of units so first the rate was 4 units later after increment it became 5 units okay now see my expenditure is constant my expenditure is constant so what is going to be the quantity now you see what is going to be the quantity now what he is telling me i am going to have some value here x and y okay x and y and after multiplying this 4x a 4 into x 5 into y whatever value i am going to get here and here it should be same just like in the previous problem i explained you about 100 rupees so in both the cases what happened we had only 100 rupees now here also when you multiply these two values you sure you should get the same product so instead of finding this x and y what you do okay what you do is you just reverse this numbers okay this is reverse this numbers and write the value that is 5 and 4 okay you write 5 and 4 now you see if you just multiply both this values you are going to get 20 when you multiply this you are going to get 20 that means we are according to the question the product of two numbers or product of this two is 20 now now what he has told me okay that as a person is unable to buy 6 kg this is very important 6 kg less rice 6 kg rice slice now what is the 6 kg it is quantity and you see what is quantity here it is 5 is to 4 that means initially he used to get 5 units and now due to the increment he is getting 4 units or you can say it in this way also initially he used to get 5 kg of rice now he is getting only 4 kg of rice due to the increment that means how much change is there here here the change is 1 unit here the change is 1 unit and how much change he is actually facing he is facing 6 kg of 6 kg rupees so, sorry 6 kg as the change now in the example which i had gave gave you about 100 rupees there the change was 1 kg 1 kg of rice and in the same way here in this particular question it is how much it is a 6 kg that means this one unit is equals to 6 kg this one unit is equals to 6 kg now we will find what he has told me what was the original price of the rice per kg so original price means initial value so initial quantity how much i used to get i used to get 5 units and one unit value is how much it is a 6 Six kg. So six five is a thirty. So the original, okay, original quantity was how much? It is five into six. That is nothing but thirty kg. Thirty kg. But what he has asked me, what was the original price of the rice per kg? See, he used to spend twelve hundred rupees. He used to spend twelve hundred rupees, and he has asked me what is the rate. So it will become how much? It will become. Twelve hundred divided by thirty. Yes. So this one zero and zero will get cancelled. Three four za 
okay it will become 40 rupees per kg so 40 rupees per kg is my answer yes i hope this question is clear for you people okay so if you don't know the concept uh, behind this it will become a bit difficult to understand okay because what we are planning is we are planning to after this upsc exam that is which is tomorrow we are planning to launch for 2021 some csat preparation strategies okay a video series is where maths english and reasoning topics some of the important topics we are going to cover them okay so now if you are observing or if you have not practiced this type of questions okay so it will become bit difficult for you to understand okay but whatever i have explained it here i have tried to explain it but we have to understand percentage topic properly here okay this question comes under percentage topic so if you have understood percentage topic properly then we can understand this procedure properly because each and every thing whatever i have represented here i have explained it well in the classroom okay if you have understood it well and good okay but if you are preparing for 2021 then shortly we are going to launch a series okay for csat preparation fine okay now consider the following statements the minimum number of points of intersection of a square and a circle is 2 now what he is trying to tell me minimum intersection that means you see suppose this is square okay and this is circle okay now if we intersect them okay you see there are infinite number of points on square and infinite number of points on circle if i say one point two point means when you intersect them then what he is telling me that the minimum number of points minimum number of points they are only two they are only two now is this a statement correct now see here now this is a square and this is a circle now see i can i can intersect this square and circle at one particular point also now see at this particular point if i just draw this figure in this way then it is getting intersect at only one particular point but what he is telling me the minimum number of points of intersection of a square and a circle is two but here in this particular case if you see the diagram properly then it is getting intersect at one particular point so that means i can clearly say that this statement is wrong now let us move to the second statement the maximum number of points see is talking about maximum number of points intersection of a square and a circle is 8 now see here if i say that this is the circle and if i draw okay just a minute if i draw a square and if i draw a circle in this way you see it is going to intersect at 8 points okay it is going to intersect at 8 points okay so it is not a perfect circle but still you can manage it so you see here there is one point here there is another point here there is one point here there is one point here there is one point so totally we are going to get eight points and this is the maximum intersection okay that we can have between square and circle okay there is no another possibility if you place this circle inside the circle inside the square also you are going to get only four intersection so this is the maximum possibility and this is the correct statement okay so what will be the answer only one only yes only two so only two will be the answer for this question okay so if you find anything maximum more than eight points okay if you feel that a square and a circle can intersect more than eight points then please tell me in the comment box okay fine okay yes this question is on uh, boat and streams topic okay 
सो ए मैन टेक्स हाफ टाइम इन रोविंग ए सर्टन डिस्टेंस डाउन स्ट्रीम देन अप स्ट्रीम वट इज द रेशो ऑफ द स्पीड इन स्टील वॉटर टू द स्पीड ऑफ द करेंट नो वन थिंग इन दिस पर्टिक्युलर क्वेश्चन यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड द डिस्टेंस इज कॉन्स्टेंट ओके एंड वेन डिस्टेंस इज कॉन्स्टेंट ओके वेन डिस्टेंस इज कॉन्स्टेंट then what will happen speed and time are inversely proportional okay now see here now how to solve this question a man takes half time to row see here now if i take downstream okay if i take downstream and upstream okay it is not talking about speed here is talking about time so if i say time okay if i say time and he is telling me when he goes in the downstream you see he is taking two units of time and when he is coming back sorry okay okay i'm sorry so when he is upstream when he is moving against the river okay when he is moving against the river he will take more time so that means this is two units and this is one unit okay and when distance is constant okay when a distance is constant this is the time okay this is time speed will be inverse ratio that is 2 is to 1 okay so that means you can say that downstream speed is two units and upstream speed is one unit now what he has asked me what is the ratio of speed in still water speed in still water speed in still water means what it is the speed of the boat okay it is the speed of the boat and what he has told me to the speed of the current speed of the current means what it is the speed of the river speed of the river so he has told me to find speed of the boat is to speed of the river so when we have up downstream speed and upstream speed finding the boat speed and finding the river speed is very easy how to find the boat speed okay add both the values divide it by 2 so 2 plus 1 it will become 3 so 3 by 2 okay 3 by 2 and what is the river speed it is downstream speed minus upstream speed divided by 2 so 2 minus 1 okay that is nothing but 1 1 by 2 so 1 by 2 so here you 2 and 2 will get cancelled 3 is to 1 is your answer and 3 is to 1 it is present in option d okay this is your answer okay so i hope you enjoyed the session okay so as i promised you that we are going to come up with some upsc csat preparation strategies we will come up with some video series okay after the upsc exam okay so all those who are appearing for upsc exam tomorrow okay from the classic institute i wish you all the very best for your exams be calm in the examination hall be cool okay because when you are calm when you are cool your mind works very powerful okay you people have studied well i wish you all the best again thank you very much have a nice day Thank you.